Hi, True Crime Besties. I am Tasha. I like to sit down and talk about crimes that have literally WTF me, which this is one of them, okay? Um, coming out of Maine, um, Withrop, Maine, about Andrew T. Balser. Okay, so at 1.49 a.m., October 31st of 2016, he called the police and the dispatcher asked him what happened. And he said, I quote, I guess the correct, the correct answer would be I snapped, end quote. Quote, I took the little K bar there and planted it straight into my mother's back. 911 asked Andrew what else had happened. He said, and I quote, well, she's lying on the floor. Boy, it's messy, end quote. And my father woke up to her screaming, screams while I stabbed the fuck out of him. Ha ha, end quote. And he goes on to say, quote, oh, I stabbed the dog too. She was barking. The dispatcher asked him if anyone else was in the home. And he said his brother was, but he left. He allowed his brother, 25-year-old Christopher Balser, to leave unharmed. So, why he did that is unclear. I have no, I wit, no idea why. Um, when police arrived, Balser was covered in blood. 47-year-old Alice Balser and Antonio Balser um, were the parents. Antonio Balser was a retired coastman. Alice worked at an animal hospital. And the couple was said to be very kind, generous, happy people. And Andrew was said to be extremely smart, good in school, and planning for college and everything like that. So, I mean, a very, very smart guy. A uh, little bit of a loner, but it's okay. So, the neighborhood was shook. While Andrew was in custody, police tried to uncover a motive as to why he, you know, he got along with his parents, no childhood trauma. Um, had no friends though. He just felt like he was just existing and he claims he went to bed around 9 p.m. that night and woke up at about round 30 in the morning shaking with a knife in his hand. Unclear why. He says it was really blurry. He said he kept a lot of swords in his, swords in his room like he was a sword collector. So, um... He said that there was a ton going on in his head, 13 kilohertz of just a high-pitched, constant tone going on in his head, claiming he has no feelings, but he does realize he straight up, like, murdered both of his parents and should feel guilt and, remor and remorse, but honestly feels nothing. So, like, all the signs of a true, tri like, psychopathic, is there 100% like WTF like it is unclear if he's starting to lay the grounds for being incompetent and he's hearing like audio hallucinations or talking about this tone as a medical condition that has a parallel to him feeling agitated like we just don't know you know right um, he has some self-awareness, though. So, he has the knife, walks to his parents' bedroom where they were both sleeping. He reached out to his hand to his mother, and she hugged him around his neck, and she said to him, quote, are you having a rough evening? End quote, let's go to your room, and I'll sit with you. So, very sweet, so kind, mother, like, very loving and attentive, and knew he struggled, you know, so she was like, I'll walk back with you and, and you know, sit with you until you're okay. Um, so very sweet. So they're holding hounds, walking back to his room, and he hugs her and he plunges a knife in her back. Um, he started with things being blurry, but now, like, like, right at first, things were very blurry. He didn't understand, but now he's giving, like, detailed accounts of like what happened and amongst the sounds or he almost sounds excited about telling the story like when you listen to his police interrogation it's just really creepy and weird as he stops his mother she yells for his father and it comes rushing and he lunged at him 
His father fights back a little bit, trying to push him away and hit Andrew. He just swung and stabbed his father. He asked if he ever thought about killing them before. He says, quote, I'm sure a thought have crossed my mind, but nothing too substantial that ever came up it. Um, he says it was more of a feeling, like part of my language, but just these fucking people, quote, rather than I'm actually going to kill them. Psychopaths often think that they are better than everyone else. So where he was very intelligent and had accomplishments, he may have felt smarter than everyone else, even his parents. Claims his mother was condescending in a way and his father looked at like he didn't care. Um, he's placing the blame basically on the victims and ex not accepting responsibility at this point. He said his dad was just a guy who lived in his house and basically ate all of his food. That's how he described his father. Like, <laughs> so he was sort of just out of touch in the world, you know, poor guy. Says his only goal was having both his parents dead. 19 year old pled guilty to both murders in hopes of getting a reduced sentence. And weeks before the sentencing, things take an unexpected turn. Uh, Balser announces he now identifies as a woman. So Andrew is now Andrea. Jenner identity issues was worried telling his parents in an interview. And he goes on to say um, she shared it with them when he was like three or four. But it was more so beat, beaten out of him and was not accepted, not acceptive. Um, never told his brother out of fear of like his reaction. He goes on to say his parents raised him to like family comes first. Don't do anything to make the family look bad. And of course him changing into a girl would make the family look bad. So a lot was riding on his poor so soldiers and he was really confused and just didn't know his place in this world and feel like he didn't really have anybody to confide in without really judging him and accepting him for who he was. Um, he says, quote, I'm not happy all of this happened. I just traded one hell for another, which very true. If he could take it all back, he would in a heartbeat. And he's now claiming abuse. But remember when he was asked in the beginning if any childhood trauma had happened, he said no. But now, in this interview weeks before sentencing, he's starting to say that there were abuse. Um, psychopathic individuals lie and fabricate, fabricate, I can't speak, info to try to gain an advantage. Balser now, um, decided this is the newest version of what's, of what happened. The crime in hopes that the courts would give him a more, much lenient sentence, um, in all my time of reading about cases and talking about cases and just reading into them fully, like he was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Um, it was both parents. I believe he should have got life, but whatever, I'm not the court system, nor am I a therapist, a psychopath. I, you know, I'm, I'm not, so I can't really give too much other than my opinion on this but really I don't I feel like his parents tried their best like especially the mother him coming into her room like it was a normal occurrence like her basically because of her response being like are you having a rough night do you want me to come sit with you so I feel like you know these occurrences happened often and she was there to support him so for him to just fully go and murder them over identity crisis i get it i don't get it i i can't say i get it because i don't but i'm pretty sure that you know maybe his parents would have been against him at first maybe they would have accepted him along the line you never know but do i think that they needed to be murdered just because of that no i don't i feel like you're a grown person you're a free will and you deserve to go and be who you want to be 
that's my story. I hope you guys like it. Subscribe for more and stay safe.